Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, good morning. A little bit different today. Uh, we're going to try and do some things, a bit of a pilot run. Um, I'll come back to this lady in a sec. I'm going to come over here and talk to this camera. There you go, straight away. You can see something different about Facebook Live. I am sat in the studios of uh, Andy Good TV and um, TalkPod TV to try something new. Um, got to love the internet. Uh, TalkPod TV, Creative Conversations. It's just a first run at something that we're going to see has got any legs. I've got three wonderful people to talk to today that is, to be honest with you, is going to make it really, really easy. Um, you know, it's Facebook Live, but with a cherry on the top and high quality. And let's see where it goes. So uh, my first guest is somebody uh, that is about as nervous as I've seen her since we got <laughs> bloody married. So, um, and it, we're just talking amongst friends here. So I'm going to forget all, all these people and we're just going to have a chat. Okay. So, okay. So, um, uh, so, and so I've prepared lots of questions, which I know that you haven't seen. Yeah, which you won't so, share, which is rude. Right, yeah. So, so for first question I'm going to ask <laughs> is, what side of the bed do you sleep? No. Um, <laughs> Um, I think that one of the reasons why I wanted you to, to, to come in and have a chat yeah. was that from a business perspective, what you've achieved has been amazing, like uh, okay. unbelievable. Um, I know that you've had some business coaching help. And, you know, I a think we, we need to thank Steve Jones for that when he comes in <laughs> later on and, and Karen and Paul. But um, uh, I think uh, the first thing to do is just tell people a bit more about who you are or who you were and a little bit about your story. So you, just two or three minutes backstory. No problem. Um, so Janet Dixon. Yes, um, I am your lovely wife. I head up the property side of Yes Can Do, uh, the Yes Can Do business. So Yes Can Do is a brand um, was created by Steve Roberts, my business partner. Um, too many decades ago for, for Steve. Um, he is known as Mr. Yes Can Do. Started um, buy to let and residential mortgages. And about five years ago, um, Steve's customers kept saying, great, fantastic customer service. Now can you let my property? Now can you let my property? And Steve kept saying, well, no, that's not something we do. And then sat there, as Steve does, and went, well, why don't we do that? And um, I think I do believe he contacted you and said, do you know anybody that had a state agency background but a business owner mindset? Um, and I'd met Steve probably about 11, 12 years ago when I was running my own business back then. And um, I think, I do believe you went, you need to talk to Janet. And about 15 minutes later, I had a Facebook message saying, we need to talk, which is never good. Um, but actually it turned out to be one of the best things um, I ever did. So uh, Steve is obviously still Mr. Yes Can Do, but I'm, I'm director of Yes Can Do Property. We've been going for about four years. So just because people won't know, um, some of your skill sets and some of the other things that you've done. So because um, there'll be some jobs in there that people won't have realised and actually a passion of yours. So, if, you know, if money wasn't, you know, we're all, we Easy all need question. to earn money. So Easy there you go. So and there'll be you. I think you'll share some stuff that people won't know. So. So I started off uh, life coming out of university with a language degree and didn't have a clue what I wanted to do and joined PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is a big financial uh, industry and company and headed up um, pretty much layman's terms, their debt recovery um, across Europe mm. with the languages, which was amazing, absolutely amazing company. Um, but my job title, it changed and it changed and it changed and it pulled me away from my passion, which anybody who knows me is people. I ended up working on spreadsheets too much. Um, so I left. Uh, there and I went into a state agency on the Isle of Wight where I lived again people every day is different I love that every day is different you kind of don't really know what's coming but sorry Steve but if money was no object and I could do anything in the world apart from a state agency um, one of the best jobs I ever did was domiciliary care um, and that's why I married you. So, yes. You know, I'm so you've old, got good so. care coming, young man. <laughs> um, I foresee the future. You know, I did. And it was um, keeping elderly people in their homes. And um, yeah, best, best job in the world. I learned so much from that job. So, you know, so there's definitely some things in there that, you know, fluent Spanish, yep. fluent French. Um, fluent gibberish. Um, I think your money background, you know, you're uh, smarter than the orange that, that you wear. I think Thank people, you. you know, you you come across as a crazy, you know, all over the place kind of girl. Yep. But I think underneath it, you know, there's a very, very smart individual. And I Thank think um, uh, people 
I don't know that they underestimate you, but um, you're certainly not somebody to underestimate. Thank so you. very, very driven. Right, so estate agency, um, it's just starting to embrace the modern age. Yes. We often talk about it. So, and I wrote something down this morning. It, it's sort of like, it reminded me of the old vinyl records that then went over to uh, online MP3s. And, I don't remember the vinyls, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> How often do we get that? So, uh, yeah, but you know, the old record, uh, when you you could go into shops and buy vinyls and they were on the high street and then it all went onto the internet. Yep. So, um, but, the estate agency industry is still very grey suits, kipper ties and on the high street. And the people that have tried to transition across, um, your purple bricks and um, the and the like, you know, there's a few of them, yes. is that they're not doing a great job with it. Nope. But you guys have done an amazing job with it. And Thank so, you. Um, so share a little bit about how you've approached that and what some of the things are that you've done to become an mp3 seller while people are still selling vinyls on the high street At ultimately 100 percent, it's based on customer service genuinely because a lot of people say oh you're an online agent no we're not we just don't have the high street walk-in that that doesn't exist anymore. it does they're still there but 99.4 percent of people go to the likes of right move zoopla prime location yeah. first and then contact the agent so we're on all of those platforms and we have got an office that people can come into they come in regularly but we've we've, we've got the old estate agency normal platform so to speak but actually we're now doing it embracing which we you can't not do in this day and age which is the massive platform of social media yeah. so we're like a i suppose a, people call us a hybrid estate agent we're not i, yeah. I don't even know what to call ourselves because i don't really like estate agents but i am one and but we do it absolutely customer service based and then with the twist of the social media social media is amazing i mean for, for our industry that we're in we've got a platform for the photos that we create, the professional photos for Yes Can Do Media, the videography, the property tours that no other agent is doing. Yeah. Um, but it, it's such a strong, strong platform that wasn't there when I first did it back on the Isle of Wight. So I just think that there's so many lessons in there for people that watch yeah. this back that, that you know, you don't have to be in a state. I mean, I use vinyl records as an example of something that was on the high street that became, and the record industry were one of the last to catch on. Yeah. And I, I see it with the estate agency. It's just like, it's, come on, you know. And I, you know, whilst I wouldn't want them all to jump on and, you know, tomorrow and end up. They got to catch up. Yeah. We're still trying to keep one, so one or two or three thing. steps ahead. And you know ahead. how abundant I am, you know. Yeah. I, 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 there's plenty of everything for everybody. It doesn't matter if they're all on. No. Actually, it's good for business because yeah. it means you have to try harder and to be that little bit better than, than the rest so of them. For, so for an example, everyone um, thinks all oh, people go to right move first to look for properties and stuff. Actually, we sell properties from Facebook yeah. before they, they go live on Rightmove. Well, I've seen you do it. So, you know, where you've posted up, this is coming to market, yep. and then your messenger's gone off like crazy before you've even hit Rightmove. It it, and so. it is. It's such a strong platform. But the thing to remember with social media, you are putting yourself and your company out there. Yeah. So you 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 have to know that it's not, not a vulnerability because actually this is a great tool for us, especially what we do um, as, an, as an industry. But bear in mind that you are going to get people go, oh, that's too expensive. Oh, the garden's a bit small. And actually, you just have to embrace that mm. and know that actually it's freedom of speech. But the mm. amount of people that um, our customer base, and again, it's drives from the customer service, that like and share our posts. Um, and like I said, our average post share and coverage is about six, 7,000 people. Right, so I'm gonna because um, I like I know you know you, you're sat there nervous about yeah I'm, you know, I'm, I don't want to pick my cup up and, in case and I we've shake. got people here <laughs> that were nervous whether or not we were going to get tumbleweed and what have you and you know we're going to dry up that's just yeah. like the 20 minutes is just going to fly by so okay. and I've got two far better guests that I need to get on after you cook your so, own tea right so um, right so uh, estate agency Monday to Friday nine, <laughs> let me finish yeah. Monday to Friday nine to five yeah. Saturday girl comes in in the morning to field calls. Mm -hmm. So where do you go the rest of the time? Well, I just kick back and play Candy Crush. So what are you doing? So right. So the the the, the message here is because there'll be people that watch, yeah. and you're on like year three, um, full on. So yeah. you know f over four years, yeah. but sort of coming into third year, full steam. F yeah. full steam. Um, give some kind of idea because this isn't just about estate agents this no. is business generally so it's a yardstick for people to understand 
shit, you know, is this really <laughs> what you need to be doing? Yeah, you so, do. So Monday to Friday, nine to five, yeah. and Saturday girl. So now give me uh, an example. The actual oh, truth. Know. Yeah. So, the truth. Share. Sure. Um, it is. Uh, it's not just a, like you say. It's not just a state agency. It's it's business life in general right now. Nine to five. It isn't there. Just a Saturday person isn't there. A day off on Sunday to go and do your shopping, it doesn't exist. And I know we've talked about it before, and I know you've talked about it with other people. Work-life balance, forget about it. Seriously, it doesn't exist. It, it's not a case of that you're working all the time, you're working all the time, you're working all the time, but as a business owner, you need to love what you're doing. You need to embrace what you're doing, because, because otherwise hours. you'll resent it. Because yeah, of the hours. Yeah. So, so, I mean, we, we've done it before. So nine to five doesn't exist. People work. A lot of people looking for properties will work yeah. nine to five or nine till seven. So they're contacting us at half past seven, half past eight, half past nine at night by either email. But it's not just a case of, so again, historically, nine to five, somebody would ring you between nine and yeah. five. As you well know, we get WhatsApp, text message, emails, Facebook Messenger at all times of the day, night, weekends, etc. And you you have to embrace that because it's not a case of you're serving your but everybody's beck and call, but speed is so important mm. um, in business. So for example, if there's a property, there are other, other estate agents out there, apart from us, um, that a property might be on as an example with two agents. So that person looking will send an inquiry to both agents, for example. Now, they'll get a response from, from my team or myself at 8.30 when they've sent that email at 8.15 that night. Even on a Friday, Saturday or a Sunday, the other agents, the chain agents necessarily, that don't, that don't embrace the having to work massive hours, they'll contact them at half past nine. Well, I've already booked them in to see that property. It, you have to, especially when you're quite young in a business, it's all in. Wow. Um, and you, but you can't. You sometimes you think, oh, wow, but actually, when you get that response back, wow, thanks very much for such a speedy response. You, there is no work-life balance, but it's um, it's amazing if you embrace it and love what you do. It's seriously cool. Right. So um, I've got a question that I want to ask at the end. But um, what? Let's just swap seats for a moment. So, so be the business coach, Ooh. and rather than just talk about um, uh, estate agency. Uh, specifically share maybe four or five like bullets that if somebody is in business uh, uh, especially if they're as far in as you are so yep. year three year four and they're scratching their head and it's not happening for them um, I've what, been there. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what sort of, what's a reality checks and what sort of bits of advice would you give from a coach's seat to sort of say, make sure you're doing this or don't worry about that. So just give some some things that you've experienced that you now know um, that's okay or this is what I would, I did, well, I wasn't expecting it, but that, this is where I'm at now. One of my, oh, there's quite a few, but flexibility. Okay. Because um, it it isn't that that's, so that in, in my handbook, it does X, Y, Z. Well, actually it goes X, Y, P, Z thing. Right all over the place so you have to roll with situations yes you can put a framework in place and a process but things don't necessarily follow that so flexibility um, and adaptability I think because every day new things are coming in for example the social media things are up updating yeah. all the time um, no you are unique in your business but actually there's a lot of people out there doing what you do yeah. so don't expect you, you're gonna win some you're gonna lose some okay. um, the ones that you lose, learn from why you've lost them, and then move on to win more. Mm. Um, you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Right. So, and that I think it took my pride a bit when somebody didn't go with us as an agent. It did dent my pride and think, hang on a second, why not? But actually, I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, love what you do. Mm. Honestly, it sounds really, really twee, but I genuinely love what I do, and it comes across. Right, so I, I want to just separate, I'm conscious, conscious of the time, but I need to separate those two things out. So love what you do, but uh, a really, really important message here is to not only love selling houses, but love the process that you have to go through yeah. to be able to sell houses. That bit for me is as, if not more important, than the widget that you get to deliver at the 100%. end. 
So, because if you don't enjoy the process to get to the house sale, then you won't ever get to sell any houses. Really. No, it's um, like I say, we're learning all the time. And another one is actually be open to learning new things all the time. Mm. Um, the minute that you think, oh, I've got this, I know what I'm doing, or that's it, you, yeah. you, you need to keep, keep learning and keep embracing new things. Right, so last question, um, and then uh, in fact, I'll have a quick look to see if there's any um, questions on here that, that that might come up before you disappear. Um, let's let's let people sort of inside. You know, this this whole thing about um, you don't teach, you couldn't. Um, I couldn't teach you how to drive, or you couldn't teach me how to drive. No. But you know, you're living with a business coach who coaches your business. Yeah. So uh, share. Um, that process and what we've done to in, to be able to make that to work to be able to make that work. So, so the formalisation of it, if you like. So, you know, we, we don't sit around the dinner table and oh, do coaching. No. So, um, <laughs> so when when you were first ready to coach my business and ultimately me, um, I wasn't ready. Right. Um, because suggestions and things like um, what about have you thought about this genuinely as a person my personality type I took that I went defensive right. and I know that I was a nightmare absolutely but actually the the further I got into the business um, I did mature into it and mature into the business owner role because it's a completely different job than being an estate agent yeah. it's two jobs um, and I've, I think I've matured into that to actually say, OK, look, I need your help. And I do remember coming to you and saying, OK, I need your help. I'm ready and I won't be grumpy. Um, but, yeah, we do. We formalise it. We actually have meetings, um, specific times and over the dinner table. It's how was your day? But it doesn't encroach. And I think it has to be very formal to be able to do that. And to, it's easy for me but to trust in, in you as a business coach to know what you're saying to me even if I don't want to hear it or I don't necessarily agree with it, that it is for the best for my business. But obviously my business and my team, um, yeah, huge difference. Right. Um, and just while I quick, quickly flick through here, um, tell our viewer... Um, what, I one viewer. Yeah, what, why, <laughs> why you were on first today. So. Oh, why I was on first. Um, I had, uh, <laughs> I had a, a viewing first thing this morning and I've hot-footed it across here to Hamble to do this and I was supposed to be on second or third but actually I bumped myself up the queue because I've got to now hot-foot it. It's quarter past 11. I've got to hot-foot it across to Portsmouth because I've got a 12 o'clock viewing. The first of four and two valuations today. Right, I'm struggling to see if there's anything specific from a question perspective, and I'm also aware of the time. So, so. just really quickly, I just again, I'm I, I'm on now. Yay! I'm not nervous. I now. knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew this was going. I'm happen. in. I'm in. Um, something that somebody else was talking about, and I know that you've mentioned it before, is when does our job as an estate agent, or when does the hard work it's, start? You uh, messed it, that up. It, you no, forgot it, that one. It's on here. Ah, okay. Um, and it's quite an interesting question because most people will say marketing the property. Or yeah, getting or the properties selling, on, or selling, or selling them. House, so. um, it's a twee thing, but I don't sell houses. People buy them. Ultimately, our hard work starts once the sale is agreed. I'm going to buy that house. The the roller coaster that is the next 10, 12, 16 weeks after that. The liaison with solicitors, the emotions that people go through, first time buyers, their naivety, people that are downsizing due to personal loss of, of partners, perhaps. Um, it that's the real hard work and a lot of people again when you say about the nine to five think we just switch off you don't you can't help but get emotionally attached with every single journey and probably the one thing that stuck on the long days and the hard days is the amount of people that remember a phrase that I use and at the end of that the, the whole process they'll say to me you gets me going but you said to me that you'd be there on the roller coaster every step with me and we are so I don't sell houses and I, people, the phrase is, I don't do property, I do people. Yeah, and I think, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, oh. you personally do, to be honest with you, that's um, why you'll always be successful at what you do. So, We're really, really you know, proud so, of our brand yeah, so, um, and so the customer so, service. So much I know, so, Andy stole it. Stole he stole our brand. Pod, talk pod TV <laughs> The orange. Um, and uh, apparently B&Q are using it. They so, are, and some you know. wiggle thing. Yeah, so... Um, anyway, um, was it anywhere near as painful as you thought it was going to be? And I'm going to refer to the pacing up and down for three months about going to the dentist. <laughs> no, so, it wasn't. It wasn't. Like, it was very enjoyable. You know, it's like we've got three people watching. But we know who they are. Two of them are downstairs <laughs> anyway. So it was always going to be fine. Yes, so, yeah. it's not too bad. Thank you. So there's a lesson in there as if well. If you are thinking about doing this, it's not as bad as you think. He's, he's all right to have a cup so, of tea with. 
Um, I think we need to uh, sort of wrap that one up. What's going to happen now is um, we're going to put what they call a bump stop, I think it is. So we're going to have like a, a two, three minute break where you're going to get the tide coming in. Everyone's going to need a wee. A one minute break where people are going to go and make another cup of tea. And then we're going to come back to um, another guest. Um, in fact, I've got two business coaches lined up. I'm about as abundant a person as you'll ever meet. Um, I coach coaches. Uh, one of the coaches that we're going to talk to today, I coach. Um, but uh, I'm going to bring an old, a really old friend on um, who um, is going to introduce Really him. old, he'll love Well, that. he's not really old, but we are old friends. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I really want to thank um, my good, you know, Mrs. Coach for coming on and giving us the uh, the best start uh, we could ever have, have, have hoped for. Love for. what you do. There you go. Because so, I'm off to nine to five Saturday now. Right now, so I'm <laughs> going to struggle to get her off. So, right, so there you go. 20 minutes bang on. Um, we're yeah. right on point. You can tell I'm a Virgo. Um, thank you for coming on. No, and, um, thank you for the opportunity, Andy. Oh, uh, yeah, go find some people uh, that you think might um, might be good victims too, so for the show. Okay. So, right, we're going to take a break there. Uh, we'll be back literally in less than two minutes. So, in a minute, we'll be back with another guest. Thank you. Bye bye bye. Fabulous. Uh, the wonders of modern technology. Um, we've managed to replace the orange with blue. Um, I've got Paul Raisbeck here. So uh, before, well, I'm going to introduce you in a, in a, a kind of, um, yeah, in a formal way, really. So because you, it, and it's fabulous to be able to have you on here today with doing something as, as a pilot. Um, excuse the pun. Yes. Um, uh, he's a pilot. <laughs> um, uh, because... Uh, the start of my journey to doing this was sat having a beer with you. So yeah. in 2004, um, uh, up at Soberton, um, uh, th this guy here, a uh, fabulous chap, um, in incredibly smart, another business coach, uh, Paul Raisbeck, um, uh, ex-Navy. Uh, he's coming back into uh, coaching, uh, which is really good to see. But we met back in 2004. We sat and had a beer, and I was in due diligence, really. I was just about to spend uh, tens of thousands of pounds, which you'd already been stupid yeah. enough to do as well. And it was really more around, um, uh, should I spend the money? And I was determined to buy the car that much. It didn't really matter what you said. I was going to buy the car. Um, and there was a bit, I don't know if it was reverse psychology, but I think the truth of it is back then it was it was tough. So I'm not suggesting yeah. it's not yeah. tough now. Yeah. Um, as an industry. So... And, um, you know, we sort of dropped out of touch when you dropped out of coaching and went back into the Navy. And um, I can remember, I mean, I mean, it gave me a wobbly chin, finding on my doorstep one day, um, you'd left a second edition of Think and Grow Rich on my doorstep. Do you remember doing yes, this? So, yeah. Um, which is uh, on my bookshelf now. So, uh, which was a, a, just a, such a lovely thing to do. So, so I'm going to um, welcome Paul uh, to having a chat. No different to Janet uh, in, in that respect. I think probably the best thing to do. You know, I've given you a bit of an intro, but um, is just just tell us a, let these because they, you know fairly new back into the circuit, I guess. Let these I've used this used another uh, flying term. Um, <laughs> let these people know a little yeah. bit about your backstory. So I think it's probably the best thing to do. Uh, yeah, um, primarily in the navy. Uh, left the navy, went to the defence industry. Didn't really sort of enjoy that. So yeah. found myself by an odd, odd, odd um, sort of not coincidence, but by an odd route into coaching. Loved the coaching, yeah. um, but I, after a few years, I felt that I, I was doing something. There was something sort of I, I didn't understand internally in myself. Um, so I decided to put that back behind me, went away for a couple of years, rethought it, and I've come back now with a more of an understanding both of myself and actually also of the benefits mm. and, and how coaching works more up here rather than purely on the business side. Mm. So I, and you and I have talked, we, we both say we don't like the term business coach because yeah. we don't coach businesses, we coach people who yeah. have a business. Um, and, it, and it's more that, that, that alignment now which I feel more more comfortable with, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, again, it's something that we both talked about off, you know, uh, non-publicly about uh, there's almost a dislike to the term business coach, mm. and it's trying to uh, put uh, trying to bring Google round to a new way of looking yeah. At it. What can we call yeah. it? Yeah. So uh, because certainly when you're out networking, there is often a, a half or a, a, an eyebrow raise. 
And it's, I mean, it's, I don't know whether it's a, a, a subject for us to talk about today because we could probably go into it at length, but it's, um, you know, it doesn't get the best rep. So, you know, it, it doesn't get good, um, you know, certainly uh, when you think about some of the results that it can bring, you know, it doesn't have the best reputation, which is a sad, a sad thing to think, uh, to, to say, really. So, um, so your Navy career, I think, you know, there's some uh, crossover for me, really. You know, I certainly didn't do the length of time uh, in the police that you've done in the Navy and certainly didn't get to the level that you did, in, you know, from a, a rank perspective. Um, is this, uh, when I left the police force, I did think to myself, what on earth does driving a car fast and being able to disarm somebody with a gun, uh, how is that going to help me in, you know, being, a, yeah. being in business? Yeah. Um, but of course, as you start to start reusing some of those communication tools and leadership tools, so share maybe some some of those things that are of great value to you that you can pass on as a as a coach to people that are in business. You know, we, I'll be talking to Jane Brooks later. You know, she's a police sergeant, thirty yeah. years. Yeah. I'll be having the same conversation with her. But I'd be really interested to know what some of your navy t mm. skill sets are. Um, so. it, it, it's across the board. Um, you know. I've done a number of different jobs, all sorts of things from sort of bomb disposal through to commanding a ship, and there's, mm. there's different bits and different elements come into all of it. But, but you know, leadership, management, systems, processes, organisation, structure, two really important ones, climate and culture. Mm. You know, climate and culture, if you get the people right and you get the, the feeling and understanding within a business and then within a team right, mm. they will do things for you or do things with you yeah. that you didn't actually believe possible. And and I'm you know I'm I'm stunned sometimes when you when you see some large businesses, even though you know that they they don't understand that and they don't they don't get that understanding of well actually you know I was talking to someone just the other day and he said uh, yeah we've had some team problems, um, and we haven't overcome them yet and and you know we we've got this mentality of the team work for us we pay them they work for us. Mm. And that's what's, you know, we've now realised that's what the stem of our problem is. And we're like, okay, you know, how long does it take you to get to that point? Yeah. But so, so all those things and, and, you know, they all come together. And, and you know me as well, I, I love learning elsewhere as well. Yeah. I mean, I've got two, two master's degrees and I've never been to university. And, I'm, and, and then... MBA. And flying and all these things. And, and the, the great thing is that everything we do in life, it's got a link mm. to something else. So you can take something that you do in flying and the structure around flying, yeah. and actually you can apply that into business. Yeah. And equally, you can apply something from business into, into that as well. And whatever you're taking it, wherever you're taking it from, and you and I both know that sometimes you'll be doing something with one business, yeah. and you think that's a great idea, or I can actually move it, you know, it'll be a, I don't know, be a construction business over there, and you can move it into an HR business over there. And, and yeah. these things can all just carry build over, together yeah. and carry over, yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, I've been flying. We, we, uh, we went gliding yesterday. Um, thank you for that. It was just amazing. So we had a, a, a great afternoon out um, to be able to uh, be towed up and uh, to 4,000 feet and, and an hour, over an hour later still be in the air. Mm -hmm. is, uh, Having gone up and down a number of times. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, But um, uh, one of the things that struck me yesterday when I was coming home, obviously I was thinking about today, but one of the things that struck me was um, how... Um, obviously, uh, as an instructor, your know, pilot, um, uh, gliding instructor, um, that the uh, level of confidence and trust. I mean, I know you anyway, so obviously I trust you. Um, but uh, when you went into that that sort of autopilot mode and uh, terminology, phraseology, and the 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 walkthrough. Um, as we were putting parachutes and things on, ready to uh, go crash a glider, was just. Um, very profound and, and, and really very clear. And I was thinking to myself how if ever you were sat with a coach, a business coaching client that is struggling and, and is trying to get to where they want to go, is that, 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 you know, that oozes out of you. So, so I, I'm, you know, because obviously I've never sat in with you on a coaching mm -hmm. session. There's another conversation really. Um, when I went to San Diego, I don't know, have you ever done it? Have you been, ever been able to sit in with another coach who's coach I've done been it coaching. Br briefly but not not not, not right. recently so yeah. I did it a lot in America it's a lot more open over there you you, you can remember back from from our franchise oh. days it was a very closed off like you know you can go and talk to coaches but they won't let they you won't, in yeah. so um and so your first real experience of it is when you start to make start it up yourself. for yourself yeah. you know so Absolutely. so so I was when when we were uh, getting ready to fly yesterday I was really 
um, thinking about how uh, confident and safe somebody would feel, not sat in a glider, but in a coaching environment with you. So, and I think that's that leadership bit that absolutely oozes out. You can't do that amount of time. I mean, what rank were you in the Navy? Oh, just a lieutenant commander, but just, <laughs> uh, just, 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 just a lieutenant yeah, commander. So, most, yeah, so, yeah, so you, you, A, you can't get to that rank without displaying right, levels of leadership, yeah, confidence, yeah. trust, you know, all of those kind of things. And I do think that because of the modest pool that I know, some of that stuff isn't shared, you know, it doesn't really come across until they get in front of you. And often that's it's trying to get people in front of you, you know, to be able to share it. So, and so I want to talk about old school, new ways. One of the things I did say we would talk about today is because I think you're in a very unique position. And one of the first things I said to you is if you coming back into this industry, you need to be doing this. You need to get in front of cameras because 2004, it wasn't a thing. Very, very uh, different. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I think that that is going to be a great way for you without physically sitting in, in front of somebody so that they can sense this level of trust and confidence that they that, that they would have in you, that you've got this medium now to be able to do mm. it. So, so let's just talk about old school. I've ended up um, rambling on. But let's talk about old school, new way of it a little bit. So share with, uh, with our viewer, some 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 of the things that you've seen already between that sort of time capsule back from when you were in this industry you know early 2004 2006 maybe 2007 and then coming back in and getting out networking which is fabulous to see um some of the changes that you've seen i think this is the big change right um you know when we when we were sort of when we started out you know facebook didn't exist there's a new thing called email marketing just coming in and no yeah. one was really sure whether it would work or not. Yeah. Um, and and it was, you know, we, we, we had to go, it was very manual. You, you had to be there, you had to be showing up, you had to be in front of somebody, whatever you were doing. I think now, as you see with this, you know, your your audience is everywhere. And and it's it's, it's a great ability and I, I still haven't got my mind around it personally myself. Oh. I, I see what you're doing, I'm thinking, whoa, okay. Um, but it's it's it really has changed massively, and it, it's it's a it's a mindset change. Both I think both for the coach and for the person for the people being coached as well mm. to sort of get an understanding because that then also then comes into what they're doing in their business and, and everything mm. else. So it's it's huge. Difference. Go into a bit more detail because I, I promise you, our viewer will be doing stuff that your share that were being done back in two thousand and four or previous to that. Mm. And there will be people that watch this and you'll share stuff with them that is no longer valid, but they're still trying to make that work. And we meet them all the time. So, you know, there are people that we, that in the time that you've been back, that we network with, for five years, they're still using the same pitch. You know, this, this is like the craziness of it. So, so I, I think it's, you know, for me, over the 14 years, I've had to evolve and, you know, in fact, doing what we do we have to try and be at the front end of this stuff you know this is why we're sat here doing facebook live with three cameras you know we're trying to in, be, be innovative so but i think it would be good for you to share some of the things things like um you were talking about there so print um i don't want to steal it away from you so but what would you have done back then to have a seminar, for example. Well, I mean, you know, back, yeah, back in the day, it was, you know, you and I probably both remember, you know, printing off, you know, all the flyers going out, sticking the sticking the stamps on the envelopes, the labels, and everything else, sending out thousands of them, and getting, you know, a handful of people in in a, in a room. Now, just you, you, you can turn that round, and it, but it, it's got to be immediate. Uh, Janet earlier on was saying, you know, speed mm. is is key. It's got to be immediate. It's also got to be. It's got to be present all the time as well. You, it, I, I'm now starting to feel. I'm, 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 I'm learning something <laughs> off you. I think that um, I'm now starting to feel that if if I'm not doing something, if I'm not, as you say, making a noise yeah. on a daily, you know, if I miss a day, yeah, I'm starting to think. Oh, hold on, yeah. the noise hasn't been made. So it's got to be. It's got to be there. It's got to be constantly. Got to be because people's minds now. You know, this is. I, I start to term this. We went through the industrial age and the information mm. age. This is the age of disruption. Mm. And there's so much going on. You've got to be doing something, which is not only disrupting what everyone else is doing as a, as a, as a standard, but disrupting that stream of information that's coming into someone else's mind to cut into it to right. make your message message felt or heard rather. And that's how good this guy is, right? So um, 
that is that word that word disruptive is one of the keys now mm. so and you know to be to come back and and and, and as quickly as you have done start to because i know you know we've talked about it but i mean i know you won't mind me sharing is this this is this you know the 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 difference in those 14 years yeah. so from print flyers um you know no social media as such um you know all those things are but gone you, now but you so. still but you still see people who are putting out really really bad paper adverts and this is why i wanted you to share because there'll just, be people is, what i'm trying to do is get yeah, at them yeah. to sort of say stop doing that yeah. so you got yeah, to g g g embrace all this new stuff so you know um, and you know, I'm always really honest. You know, that, you know, it's the sort of thing I would sort of, sort of pass on to you, if you like, in front of our viewer. Is this, if you're trying something new out, especially with a client, I would absolutely put it on the table and say, well, let's try it. You know, yeah. who knows? Who yeah. knows? I've said to Andy, you know, that well, 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 let's have a go. Let's see if this yeah. works. If it works, if we get four viewers, and you know, and then then we get eight viewers and twenty viewers, then let's keep it going. Yeah. So it is very much throwaway. We've got such a great opportunity yeah. nowadays to try stuff. We talked about some stuff yesterday that I'd love to see you have a, yeah. a poke at. Really. And the, so, uh, the other interesting thing as well, I think, is that is that you know, in the past, we've all learned from books. And, and I think a lot of people are still learning from books. Yeah. And I know you're writing a book, but you're not writing a book <laughs> in that sense yeah. of, of here is a book on how to do yeah. sales for your business, here's a book on how to do marketing. Yeah. Actually, again, the disruption of the speed, yeah. it's all moving. So you've got to be doing stuff like this, I think getting the, it moving the, forward. The dis the, that's a, a massive takeaway from our chat yeah. is if you're not being disruptive, then uh, you've got to f And disruptive in a positive way, of course, yeah. you know, being disruptive to... Um, in a good way you know it, I think that's a big key the analogy I use is that we live in a world really where when we're trying to go to market we're in a football stadium with 35,000 people and they're all shouting to yeah. and what is it that you can do is it that you're wearing a big dicky bow tie and, and and dressed as a clown or is it that you're shouting or saying something that is completely different to everybody else or wait until it goes quiet and they're making a noise or making more noise than they are so it's just finding the ways to do it and you know same as um, uh, I said to Janet earlier one of the, the the keys here is um, uh, finding ways to do it uh, in a way that is different to anybody else not necessarily from a USP perspective but that makes you remarkable that makes you stand out yeah. and that's that disruptive word yeah. so so that people stop and say well what's going on there yeah. so which is exactly what this is in in essence you know the the talk pod yeah. stuff so and the other, the other benefit that all this brings as well is is that when you're standing in that stadium before you were shouting out 35,000 people actually now you can stand in that stadium and you're only you're only you're shouting but actually you're only shouting to 10,000 people yeah. because you can you can you know you can bring your message down because your audience is no longer just Southampton or Portsmouth your audience yeah. is the world you can actually niche down yeah. right down to sort of the people you want to you want to be in your tribe you know advert time so um you know we've been sort of fairly honest about the fact that you're um, keen to get back and yeah. do some uh, some coaching work this is a good guy there are lots of bad guys not bad guys but guys that just I wouldn't recommend uh, you are definitely one of the good guys um, uh, you know a very you as you know uh, completely abundant in all of everything that I do I've spoke about it earlier so share you know what um, what would um, without using the cliche you know what is it you're looking for today yeah. um, what kind of um, uh, clients, geographic, you know, whatever. So anything that would help get you back and doing the stuff that I know that you're absolutely really yeah. good at. So, well, I'm, I'm, as you're aware, I'm splitting my time at the moment between Cheshire and uh, Hampshire. So mm. I'm heading off to my northern office this afternoon. Um, so, so you know, I'm working in both areas. Um, what am I looking for? You know, it, 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 it's really just people who actually want to move forward mm. and, and when I say want to move forward I've you probably done exactly the same you've sat in front of somebody and said are you 100% committed to the coaching mm. and they've said yes absolutely <laughs> and yeah. you know some people sort of look at it and they, they they almost see you come through the door and go oh that's great I'll just you know I'll dump all my problems on this person then yeah. it'll, it'll work it, it won't it's mm. got it you the, the business owner has got to be fully behind taking ownership accountability yeah. responsibility all those things of saying, you know what, actually, yeah, this is the point where I need to get ahead and do something. Or alternatively, ideally, that 20% who look beforehand and say, 
you know what, I've got to where I am now. Let's bring people on. Let's move things forward mm. before we start dropping into the... Uh, into the I, I know that there is um, a raft of comments on the feed, so and I'll get all of you to put your contact details yeah. on there. But are there some places that people can find you um, and go and cyber stalk you to find out a bit yeah, more? Yeah, Brent's Coaching um, okay. on Facebook um, and Brent's.com, B U R E N S E.com. What does that yeah. Tell me what the word is. I'm not going to tell you now. So you have to go and find it. It'll be it. too long. All right, okay. It'll take too long. So Brent's Coaching. Yeah. Um, and, Facebook uh, on Facebook and then Brents.com right. is the website okay and uh, all the details are on there right fabulous check this guy out seriously um, a, an amazing business coach and the start of my journey so uh, back in 2004 so clearly didn't listen um, to me listen to me did you <laughs> yeah I'm still driving that old banger so still driving still getting away with it I'm waiting, you know I'm waiting to get caught yeah. so thank you for coming on it's just like you know you know if, if this is going to be a thing it is and we look back on it as the pilot um, I, I'm just so glad that I was able to, because it, it, you know, it's, it reminds me when I went back to speak at Reading, uh, God, about three, four years ago, and that's where I got made redundant from in oh. 2003. And um, it was a real, like, I, I loved going back there to give them the finger to sort of say, look what I've achieved after you laid me off kind of thing. Um, so it was, uh, for, for all sorts of reasons, it was really good that we were able, because I know you're going straight off to Cheshire, aren't yeah. you? So, so thank you for coming in and doing yeah. it. So, yeah. right, so uh, we're going to take uh, another break, right. uh, another 60 seconds, I reckon, and we're going to replace uh, Paul with uh, somebody that's extremely attractive, other yeah, than... I was say, uh, yeah. more attractive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but another business coach, um, and we'll introduce her once she's uh, uh, taken a seat. But uh, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll um, no doubt catch up soon. Indeed. So thanks, thanks for the invite. Cheers, bye. Here we go, last one, saving the best till last. Um, I have with me two people. Um, what's he gonna say? <laughs> I've got two people with me. I have uh, another business coach, but I also have a client with me. So, ah, yes. yes, so so it's gonna be really interesting. So, um, Cara Murray, um, you know right from when we sat down a year ago, I said to you, um, you were one of the good ones, no different to what I said to Paul today. Um, so, and without, should, should, we could name them. Should we do that? We'll get a lot more viewers. Let's start naming what, all the really bad, all the bad ones. ones. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, I, I had a bad one that uh, keeps emailing me on uh, on LinkedIn. What, still? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, okay. I just un, unconnect. Yeah. They so, only email me to sell, sell me their stuff. So show two, what we'll do is on show two, I'm going to bring a list of all the really bad um, coaches and we'll go through them and I'll just sort of say why I think they're bad. Do you think that would, is that what they call clickbait? I think, I think that's, that's clickbait. Call... I'm not sure it's very honourable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right, think you so, and I would enjoy that. Seriously, one of the good coaches, um, I um, genuinely felt that you were kind of floundering trying to find your place in mm. the marketplace. Mm. Um, that was just my sort of take on it. Mm. And fortunately, you know, which is how this process works best is when people come to you. Mm. And so I got this opportunity to be able to work with you. Um, uh, I think before we get into any details, because I, I, you know, I did want to keep you till the end, because I think we'll probably run over twenty minutes. It's the truth of it. So, so if our <laughs> viewer might. does stay more than twenty minutes, then we'll be fab. So, um, I, the only reason I say that is because I know that our sort of ninety-minute to our coaching sessions, I think the shortest has been two and a half hours. So, <laughs> um, because when you get two coaches together, it's just like it's a nightmare. So. Um, Introduce yourself and share with me and with them something maybe because I'm guessing there's stuff about you that I don't know about what you've done and in the past and you know what got you to um, wait Karen Murray coaching I guess. Okay so you've introduced me I'm Karen Murray and I'm a business coach now um, but I started work when I was 16 so I didn't do the usual college university route and I worked in business administration then and sort of progressed quite quickly. Um, but didn't really have any belief in myself or what I might be able to do, which was partly why I didn't do college and university. Um, but by the time I got into my mid-twenties, I had a really good boss who actually said, what are you doing? Mm. You know, you're, you're my EA now, executive assistant now. What are you going to do? 
for the rest of your working life because you're going to get bored doing this, but you will hit a ceiling. And he encouraged me to apply to universities as a mature student, which meant I didn't need to go and do A-levels. So I did that. And I wanted to do a business studies degree because my brother had done one and was now working in De Beers, the diamond oh, you know, yeah. in marketing. And I thought, oh, you know, that would be good. But I, my first two modules were finance and law. And I really didn't enjoy it. But I had to take a secondary subject um, because there weren't enough credits in the business degree. So I had ap- happened to just look through the prospectus to find something that looked interesting. And in the geology section, um, they went on field trips. And the first one was up to Scotland. And I thought, oh, I fancy that. So I did business studies with geography. Wow. But I loved it. And then I transferred over to an earth sciences degree. So lots of people don't know that about yeah, me, that I have a I geology, that, strong yeah. geology background, and, and I'm fascinated by that. Um, but I met my husband towards the end of my degree, and he's a little bit older than me, a bit like um, you and Janet. Um, I hope things work out better for you than they did for us. <laughs> 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 well, after this morning, I think yeah. you might be sleeping in the garage. Yeah, but, um, again. We, we wanted to get on and start a family, so we had Matt. So I then had five years at home. Instead of doing all the kind of global travel that I had planned to do in my head with my new super-duper geology degree, I was at home with Matt, which was great. But then I wanted to do something that would enable me to you know, do that. So I became a teacher. So it was quite a circuitous route. Yeah. I had a really circuitous route to becoming a business coach. Did teaching for five years, and what that helped me with was how you formulate teaching how because adults learn the same way children do yeah we're just children with a socially acceptable veneer really and so we learn the same and it it taught me a lot about how to help people to learn and the vulnerabilities that we experience when we're learning which is really important in coaching because you are in that learner position very often Um, But then somebody was struggling in their business and asked me to help them. And I tapped back into my sort of executive assistant roots and business process and systems. And I started to work for them as their director of business administration and strategy. Grew that business really successfully with the rest of the board. Um, And then went from there to starting my own business. To, to do that for other people. So right. I'd done that with that person and I just thought this, I really love doing this, it's exciting. I think I could yeah. do that for other people. So that's a long, the long version. Yeah, no, I, well, I, I learned some stuff there. So I knew the uh, teaching bit. Mm. Um, one of the big, big standouts for me, uh, there were two really. Uh, one was how well, how good a communicator you are, so how articulate you are even just then, just sharing who you are, uh, incredibly articulate. Uh, but the, the big standout for me, because I, you know, uh, you know, you read books on leadership and there are some books on leadership that sort of say anybody can become a great leader. And I, I, in honesty, I think that's bullshit. I think that uh, leaders are, are born that you, you don't really make leaders. So it's sometimes people end up, and we'll be talking to Jane Brooks at some point today uh, about um, accidental managers, which is a fabulous term, um, people end up in positions of leadership, but they don't. Uh, it's not because of their their natural skill. It's just that they've been positioned there. So, but you have, and so in this industry, I think there's a DNA. I think that there's this um, uh, uh, a way that those that are successful at it and and have the longevity, it's because what they it's what they were meant to do. And one of the things that one of the big big things that stood out when I first met you and met you a few times was this this whole awareness thing and if you have fabulous self awareness of of with, you know how you're feeling and and how to manage and deal with that then of course that translates out to to people that you are looking at or working with and that's one of the key things that we need to be able to help somebody that's struggling because sometimes they're not self aware and so being able to ask, rather than just say, you're really shit today, you've got to ask those, que- oh, excuse me some, for swearing, but you've got to ask those questions, haven't you? Yeah. So that they can say, I'm really shit today, aren't yeah. I? So, mm-hmm. And I, I sort of had a little poke at this with you this week. Mm. So um, sometimes I like to be a naughty, you know, coach and, and play. Mm-hmm. And so you will ask questions to just play games. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if he's still watching, but I did it with, Brad Burton, when I was with him last week, um, he still doesn't know what it was that I did to him. I did some <laughs> stuff to him last week. Um, 
uh, but sometimes we do it, uh, you know, very openly. So, um, so where does that come from? Do you think? Do you think it's the teaching? Do you think it's the um, just the, the? Is it DNA? Is it school? I don't know. So this this self awareness thing and the articulate element. I think. Um Actually, my mum, I think, is probably the source of being quite articulate and, and confident. My parents, actually, both my parents, when I was growing up, encouraged us to, you know, talk around the dinner table, express viewpoints on things, look at the wider world and, and talk about it. Um, and I love communicating, so I think part of it is a, a DNA thing. I mm. really enjoy listening to good speakers who are doing it well there's a real thrill of listening to somebody who's just good at the oratory even mm. if what they're saying isn't yeah. on the money um and so i think that's just part of who i am um i think teaching helped to hone that and gave me the confidence to speak more um off the cuff because teaching is basically a six hour unscripted play. Okay. <laughs> this know, is the articulate thing that I really are, <laughs> love about you, see? That's fabulous. Yeah. You are, you know, you don't script your day. Mm. You don't know what the children are going to ask. You don't know how they're going to respond to your lesson. You don't, and that's the same in coaching and everything. You can't fully prepare for it. You can only prepare yourself to be the best that you can be when you're sat in front of that person. Yeah. And I suppose the self awareness bit came from struggling with my own identity and struggling with my own issues around growing up. My dad is adorable. When I talk about him, I get quite emotional because oh, I just God, love him to bits. Nearly Janet going, but don't know, you go as well. I won't go. Um, you know, I love my dad to bits. Growing up, though, he was a perfectionist, mm. and, and it was a misguided sense, I think, of his belief in me. So dad has always, and both my parents actually, have always had such a strong belief in me that they always believed I could do better and could do more, mm. which is a wonderful thing for a child. But when you experience that, how could you have got the A when you got the B? Mm. Or, you know, how could you have made that better? What could you have done differently? All the time, you start to mm. wonder if you're enough. Wow. And I think I spent a 20-year journey, really, trying to work out if I was enough that yeah. culminated in some fairly serious um, issues with mental health, anxiety mm. and depression. So kind of been there and done that. And in fact, I started my business at probably the lowest point in my life where I was really, really struggling with Perfect those things. <laughs> so, yeah, and you know, I was, I was newly single. I'd just taken on a large mortgage. It was, it's been a really mm. difficult time, but I think through that and having counseling and reading a lot of books on personal development, I think I had to look inwardly. Yeah. And that then helps me, I think, when you've been really broken, you have an enormous amount of empathy and compassion for people who are sat with you yeah. who are going through that. So I think that's where those things yeah. come from. So this is why we end up talking for so long when we sit when we sit. Because I coaching. don't be succinct. Well, no, it's just that we're, we're, it's always deep and meaningful. Yeah. So I, I'm going to um, give a shout out for another coach who um, I have a great deal of respect for, Alex Petty. Do you know Alex? Um, I do. I think yeah. Yeah. I so he. I Alex. hope Alex is watching. If he's not watching, um, I'm sure he will watch what what we're putting out. And in fact, you know, uh, on the assumption that we don't get booted out after this, and Andy says don't ever come back because it was it was rubbish. If we get to run again. Again, I'm going to get Alex on. So, um, when I was um, working in a, a franchise uh, m many years ago, uh, Alex was in the franchise too, and um, we were sat around a table with 10, 12 other coaches. And I can remember him uh, asking. Um, he, he was challenged. He was struggling, and he asked for some help uh, around the table, which is, you know, just what you should do. And yeah. uh, when you've got 12 coaches sat around you, and I, I put my hands over my eyes because he just got bombarded by the rhetoricals and the classic coachy, you know, what if you did know and have you tried this? And, um, you know, uh, it, it was just horrible. It was horrible to see. And actually all that Alex wanted was the bloody answer. Mm. So can somebody just tell me what to just do? Tell me what to do. Yeah. So so that was has been a big part of um uh, in fact, I've got some clients that actually I work with them for that very reason, that you absolutely want to coach, but sometimes in business, it's just a realisation, they just want to know what mm. should I do, to the extent that sometimes you do it for them. I don't know if you do, mm. but there, um, you know, there are occasions when I will 
do an advert or I will do a spreadsheet or yeah. I, I've got, um, um, you know, I do Janet's dashboards. Mm -hmm. So um, where are you with those kind of things? So, you know, in a, from a traditional sense, the you know, my coach used to say to me, it's taboo, you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. They should be filling in the forms. They should be sending you the feedbacks. You know, we have a bit of banter about feedback. <laughs> so uh, where are you with that? So I'm, I would say um, from that point of view, I, I am a business coach, but I'm not really a coach. Right. I think I, I fit more comfortably in advisor, okay. um, supporter. I'm just so writing these down because we talked earlier about wanting to get rid of the, the whole yes, business coach. Yes, I'm advisor, advisor supporter. I'm um, stealing this right now. Just friend, uh, sounding board. Yeah. But I'm not really a coach because I think that most people who come to me, if they knew the answer, they'd already be doing it. Right. So sometimes it is about holding people accountable. So sometimes when I think somebody's sat in front of me and they do know the answer, they're just not implementing, I get them to articulate the answer and then I find out, well, then why aren't you already doing that? Yeah. Or if you are doing it, how could you do it differently? So that you become more in that coaching yeah. role if I feel they know the answer. But a lot of the time you're looking at people who either tacitly know the answer, but they haven't yet made it explicit. Right. So sometimes we need to get it down hmm. and they need to talk so if I make their job also the scribe you can't write and artic you know you yeah. can't it's all difficult to do yeah. they just need some thinking time they're yeah. often coming for headspace for for me to take a little bit of the burden away for a while so yeah. I, I'm not going to add additional burdens onto them and if I talk to them about having a spreadsheet or a dashboard and they look horrified hmm. I do that for them and then when we get together we fill in the numbers you bring yeah. the numbers I'll fill in them and yeah, we'll look okay. at what that means and analyze it together so yeah. I suppose it's about working with your client where they are rather than where you think they should be mm. um, or where they think they should be so sometimes they come frustrated because they think they ought to be they're comparing themselves to other people and they think they should be somewhere mm. else compared to but we can only ever compare ourselves to ourselves and what we, the next stage of our own journey. It's like, you know, Paul talked about the disruptive word. Um, Janet, uh, whilst we didn't use the word, she very much has disrupted that industry. Mm. Um, you have been talking a lot today about mindset. You know, in fact, everything you've just said really in, in, that, in that last piece, that last segment was very much about how people think and how they perceive and you know what where their barriers are mm. aren't in knowledge mm. it's it's their belief systems their attitudes um so um where where are you with that whole mindset piece and how do you think that's helped you become the success that you've had um in terms of my own mindset or helping other people with it well both really so you know you, uh, if you think about it as a i'm no different as a business owner um i still have the same challenges as other business yeah. owners you know which is why we end up sat together you know it's, yes. just, it's like it's um um it, it, uh, it's, it's no different it's as if i was running a, a sweet shop so um so so it works for us for ourselves you know I, you need to have the right mm. mindset but also when you're sat with somebody and they're saying that they haven't got enough new business is that because their marketing sucks or is it because their attitude sucks? Yeah. So so I just try to understand from you where you how you see it. So I'll often attack the 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 data points first because I think that gives us a starting point. So looking at the numbers is always really useful because the numbers tell their own story. So what marketing are you doing? Okay. That immediately people can start to say, Okay, well this is what I'm doing and it's it's an easy conversation once they write it down for them to say, Do you think that's enough? Okay. And and you know so how that's a great coachy question. That's uh, you know, do you do you think that's enough? How what what are the results? Are the results getting you? You know, I normally I say to people, if you're getting the results that you want, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. Hmm. There's only something wrong if you're not getting the results that you want. It's the same with leadership. You know, hmm. yes, people aren't born into leadership. They sometimes they do have to I believe people can grow into it, but great leaders I yeah. think have to have an inherent DNA. DNA but I think you can get better at leadership and one of the things that I think helps you to be better at any of these things is are you being intentional about it yeah. so I think mindset fits into that for me as well are you being intentional about looking at your mindset so if you're not getting the results that you want there's going to be either you don't know enough Okay. Or you're not doing enough. This is why you're so good at this. See? <laughs> or you're not thinking. How in clear the right is way. that? How clear is that to share 
uh, for, if, if people aren't writing that down, so you know. but you have knowledge, action, mindset. So yeah. actually, I suppose it's just my way of it's. I suppose yeah. I've just stolen that from you. Really, it's I don't know enough. I'm not doing enough, or there's something inherently going on up here yeah. or in here. And I often find that people who know enough but aren't doing enough, yeah. it's not that their attitude sucks. It's that they don't believe in themselves. Yeah. And I think we need, we need real clarity about what to do. We need a really clear plan about how to do it. And then we need to believe in ourselves. And when those three things come together, I think we get real action. So if we've got real clarity about what we're trying to achieve, and we've got a plan for how to achieve it, and we get ourselves sorted out to a place where we really believe that we can get that result, we can achieve that goal, we start taking action. So if one of those three things is missing, yeah. then we, you know, we take a lot of action because we're very courageous and we really think we're it, yeah. but we don't have any goals. Yeah. So we're just like going around like headless chickens. And those are the people that I find who don't have any focus. Right. They are subject to every salesperson that sells them the new model that's gonna make them six figures in three months because they don't actually know what their own goals are. I'm going to delete this section of the show <laughs> if you don't bloody mention something when I next ask what, you a question. What, your breakthrough? Right, OK. <laughs> we talked about it. Right, this is so important. Because I love it. Is, it. I think it's really powerful. That is true. Those yeah. three things I find when I'm coaching is that when I'm getting people to break through, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Which of these three things is missing? Now, alongside of that, with PLAN, is a bit like when I talk about in SMART, the other acronym I use, mm. um, being methodical. In that section, in having a plan, you need to monitor your results. You need to be looking at some numbers. You need to have some systems and process that make that plan happen. Right. But really, those three things are what I'm looking for. And if, if people want a breakthrough in life or in business, and usually we need a breakthrough in both as business owners, mm. because what's stopping us is usually us. Yeah. So if you want a breakthrough in life or in business, one of those three things is going to be your problem. I, I pretty much guarantee mm. it, other than I just don't know enough. But, but that becomes then your job. If your goal is this, and you then find, I don't know enough to take action, then your plan is... Right, learn how to do it first, yeah. then then start to take the action. That becomes your new job is to learn how to do it. And this is why I, you know, I enjoy working with you, of course. Um, and I, you know, I genuinely, I said to Paul yesterday when we went gliding, you know, when I first, when, when we and he first started, there was nobody giving us a leg up. There was nobody helping. On the contrary, it was, the, it was this anti-abundant sort mm -hmm. of attitude. And... Um, and we were actually, with machetes, trying to break into uh, an industry that people didn't really st understand back in, two, in mm -hmm. early 2000s. And then it got lot and has still gets lots of really bad press. So mm -hmm. and so when, uh, you know, part of my whole journey now, you know, this whole thing about wanting to leave legacy and wanting to help. And mm -hmm. it's very, very genuine. Very, you know, this is absolutely what I want to do. Uh, more and more now. So I coach um, a few coaches and, and I've coached actually quite a few coaches over the years. You are definitely um, the like on my bloody doorstep. So again, you know that does don't, you know for me is very clear about the abundance uh, element. I do coach with a lady up in the Wirral. Um, I work with uh, somebody in the States, but um, uh, the 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 more we, you know, I sort of pass the baton to you, and you sort of, I'd, I'd say the same to you that if you find somebody that um, has all the right DNA is to make sure that you give them the leg up too, you know, and, and you know, I'm very openly, I will share with anybody that's watching anything that comes from this lady that you think, well, I've seen that Ian's got that stuff. She has permission to use anything that I've got. So um, uh, not that, that to give you a shortcut, but if you think that, well, why would I want to change that? Mm -hmm. Then it's yours to use. So, um, so, and I've, as I've said the same to Paul. So, because you want to be able to help the good ones, you know, mm -hmm. to help get them to where they want to go. So, you know, we've had long conversations about those sort of things. So, uh, what? So, I'm conscious that I knew we'd overrun, which is why we wanted to bring you on last. So, um, so sort of two, three minutes. Uh, what are you going to be doing for the rest of this year? Not holidays, but you know, uh, from a work perspective, and then into next year. What's exciting about uh, Karen Murray coaching? So. Your breakthrough year 
is has is something that I'm working on at the moment, which is a, a product really that will enable people to experience the kind of breakthrough that they want in their business. Mm. So I want to have a program running next year where quarterly people can come together in something called the Profit Hub and have their breakthrough year. So wow. that quarterly what they're doing is reviewing the previous quarter and planning their next quarter. And then in between, you know, some people might want coaching, but there'll be, you know, a Facebook group where people can support each other. I'll be hopping in. I'm hoping that, you know, you might hop in and be one of the you experts me, in the so group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm two to one at the moment. And then On speaking, so, yeah. so yeah. Um, that will hopefully launch in January. Well, that will launch in January. Let's not use the hopefully word. That will launch in January. And what I'm trying to do there is make coaching available to people, make something available to people who otherwise would find one-to-one -one coaching prohibitively expensive. Mm. Because I think there's a, a raft of people that really want help, but coming to somebody like us one-to-one, -one, they're just yeah. not at that, not that, that place yeah. yet. So your breakthrough year is something that I feel really passionate about for next year. To get ready for that, I'm, I'm working on the Smart Business Podcast far harder than I ever thought it would be and a really interesting journey, journey for yeah. me um, so that's that's kind of an ongoing thing that, I, that I'm not going to let go of that will launch mm. and it will launch when I'm ready to do it really really well okay um, so and we'll talk about that and I know you'll keep holding me accountable <laughs> for doing that I love my job and then <coughs> I'm speaking with you in um, October the 26th yeah on a subject we're both really passionate about, marketing and sales, because yeah. they are the lifeblood of people's business. Yeah. And most people that aren't making enough money, there's something going on in their marketing and sales, and usually there's something going on with their mindset. So I'm gonna be covering some of that stuff on the 26th of October. So I'm gonna do lots more speaking next year, lots more seminars, lots more workshops to make more of this stuff available to people, because communication is my passion. And I am a I'm a natural teacher. Yeah. Where potentially I'm not a natural coach. I have to right. work harder at the coaching, but I do love communicating and I love workshops where people are able yeah. to engage with the learning as they go along and come away with something that means that they take action the next day. So I think people that saw you at the big one hundred, um, because you again moulded yourself into that very uh, challenging uh, concept of a tip every three minutes. You absolutely just melted into there perfectly i think the sales and marketing workshop that we're running in october um 26th of october um 9 till 4 30 at the langston hotel uh, check web for details um uh, thank you for the lead-in um i think we'll see the true so that'll be more the Karen Murray that I know as teacher, trainer, coach, mm. so and speaker. So I think because it's a much more of a workshop, head down type mm. of environment where this transference of information um, in a, a training, coaching car, you know, because we, we there'll be some help at the mm. tables and what have you. So mm. really looking forward to that. So where can people find out about uh, all of these things that you're doing? Um, Facebook, uh, website, just just share so that people can go find you. So www.karenmurraycoaching.com is the uh, uh, website and you can sign up to get email when the podcast is, is launched there and you'll only get email weekly email to say this is the next podcast episode and here's some extra stuff from me because you're on my list there won't be anything else so just for my gdpr job, okay. job yeah, done tick. you don't have to tick boxes if you've opted in for the podcast that's all you'll get um and then facebook is karen murray business coach i try to do a facebook live most days it, it tends to be two or three times a week at the moment but my september is is every day want to get in so we you know talk, talk pod, pod tv i'm really loving the the show aspect. I'm looking forward to seeing think, it back. Yeah, so. I think it'll be really good. So those are the two main ways to find me at the moment. Okay. How about you? When people want to find you? Well, um, well, yeah. It, t one of the things is, I, don't, I, I guess it's a little bit egotistical. I spent years. Um, there's a very famous Ian Dixon. Uh, in, in fact, his name, is, my middle name is Ross, and his name is Ian Ross Dixon. No way. Ab way. So, I did not know that. About yeah. You. Yeah, so what, my middle name? Yeah, and that, that there was somebody else called and Ian Ross And he is Ross mega Dixon. famous. This Ian Ross Dixon is mega famous. He's the equivalent to Simon Cowell in Australia. He's a Thank big um, uh, music mogul. 
And so he always owns the front page on Google if you put his name in. So my name in, not his name, my name in. Uh, but now if you put my name into Google, I um, I own the front page, which is just, uh, I just, you know, I always look skyward and, and think mum would be really proud if she, if she's Googling me up there, she's going to find me. So, um, so my work here is done. Yeah. Um, yeah so, um, yeah, just, you know, and bizarrely, um, I couldn't get iandixon.co.uk for years and years and years. And I was just randomly looking about three years ago, and it was just like there, three pound fifty, and I was just like, oh my god. So Karenmurray.com is seven thousand pounds, so, so it'll be a while before I can buy that one. So iandixon.com <laughs> is owned by a guy in Gloucester, and if he's watching this, you're a very greedy man. He wanted fifteen grand for iandixon.com. I said, but no, you've got the wrong used. Ian Dixon. Mm. <laughs> you but want it's to not be... being used. No, it's no, not. It's not even mine. Mine isn't either. It's so, a premium. It's one of these premium yeah. domains they've stolen it. So, but I think it's interesting because. You know, asking you that question about how to find you, I, one of the things I think we both have to operate with a very abundant mindset mm. because we actually go to the same networking groups, we mm. speak to the same people, but we both have a slightly different way of doing things. And I think we both, you know, I've, I've got a, a client of yours recommended somebody to me <laughs> that I had coffee with Fair. just because she'd said, and I knew and you'd be suit. really pleased about that. Yeah. Yes, because, uh, but, and I think we do operate with that abundant mindset because one of the things that's heartbreaking is seeing how many businesses are struggling that could really do with help. Mm. So it's not that there's a lack of um, mm. businesses out there, it's that there's a lack of really good business coaches sending out messages that connect with those people yeah. that enable them to say, actually, I would quite like some yeah. help. So, you know, you, you sort of round me off just perfectly because, you know, closing message really for me, um, I'm going to talk to camera and then we'll, we'll say goodbye. But um, this uh, the reason why I've had coaches on today really, uh, as much as anything, they're easy people to talk to, but is that the industry really doesn't have a great name and there are some really, really good coaches out there. You know, people like Karen that are just amazing. So, and Paul. So. Like you. Uh, well, you know, there's, I, the fact that I'm 14 years in tells me I'm still getting away with it. So um, <laughs> I'm still get, waiting to get tapped on the shoulder, say, so get back to work. So, um, but it just goes to show there are some really, really good coaches out there. And, you know, you might have to kiss a few frogs, but go seek these people out. They are seriously good at what they do. And the industry, it works. It absolutely works. I wouldn't be 14 years in if it didn't work, I promise you. So, so thank you for coming in. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, close off too because it was a perfect round off to what we've been talking about I think um, right so I'm going to come I'm, over now I'm going to say oh, next well, time next time we do this I'm going to interview Ian fabulous there you go how about that he's so, been really generous with us today and allowed us as coaches to showcase ourselves yeah. but this man you need to hear some more from him so um, well, I'm going to interview you next time right okay well I didn't know that that was coming so we need, might need some more 50p's for the meter, Andy, to uh, to see if we can get another one going. So, um, right, if you've watched the show today and you've enjoyed it, please do share it. I meant to say all the way through, please keep keep hitting the share button. But of course, it's going to be posted up, uh, posted up, uh, and you can go back and watch it at any time. You might be watching this tomorrow. So, uh, but please do if you find anything of interest in here, just hit the share button. It's you know uh, completely free to do. So. Um, I want to thank Andy and Jim uh, for uh, essentially sponsoring what we've done today. Um, it really was a pilot uh, opportunity for us to test uh, whether or not this is a thing. Um, I think that Andy definitely has hit upon something that is a gap in the market. So we have the um, the the nowness and the the the, the immediacy of live uh, Facebook Live. But we've also got the professionalism of a studio environment, um, be able to interchange with guests and just basically talk for uh, well over an hour uh, about things that I think uh, that you, I th hopefully you'll find interesting. It can be cut up, it can be reused. Um, if you're thinking about coming in and using the talk pod type uh, environment, get in touch with this guy. Seriously, you come in, record, it's done, it's live, and then you can go away and cut it up, reuse it, repurpose it and you haven't got to keep coming backwards and forwards. It's done, it's done in one go. And these guys really know what they're doing. So 
Um, there was a little bit of nervousness this morning, but I think we settled down in the end and everything uh, went to plan. So um, unless he's going to tell me he's had a blank screen for the last hour and 10 <laughs> minutes and somebody's left the lens cap on. Well, so we were, I was watching <laughs> Janet and um, Paul. All right, so it, it has definitely gone out. Brilliantly. Right, so, brilliantly. Right, so we're going to wrap up there. We um, overrun by about 15, 20 minutes, but we didn't really want to set a time to go. I know that we've got somebody, we're doing something at one o'clock, I think. So, so we're going to go. Thank you again for coming in. Thank Absolutely you. fabulous. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and who knows we might even do it again this year so um, we'll see where we go thank you